The next thing you've got to do, you have got to hire professional people to do your benchmark poll. This is your roadmap to tell you where your campaign's at. This benchmark poll cost me $16,000 wow. <clears throat> for the professional people to run it. What they do, they pick a selection of people around the district, and when they call them, the first thing they ask, did you vote in the last two congressional elections? If they say no, they think of further time and hang up, because if you're not a voter, they don't want to talk to you. If you voted in the last two congressional districts, they ask you a whole series of questions. What is your age? What is your religious affiliation? They ask you these whole series of questions. Then they ask you, do you know Wayne Christ? That gives me my name recognition. How many people in the district already know me? The next important question is the head-to-head. -head. All right. If the election was held today, would you vote for Bill Emerson or would you vote for Wayne Kreitz? This tells you where you're at if the election was held today. And when my poll come back, 60% of the people was going to vote for Bill Emerson, 40% for me. I had to move 10% from him over to me plus one vote to get elected. Alright, in this, it also, all of these different groups, they categorize them into groups. Alright, one of the problems that I had is the women in this group from the 40 to 60 age range were worried about me because they considered me kind of radical. And so when my media people got this benchmark poll, then they started putting the media campaign together. One of the groups they targeted was this 40 to 60 age group of women. We had to move them because that was one of my weakest points. So when they put their campaign media thing together, all right, it showed me in a positive light. It showed me with my wife and my kids and my grandkids. And they always like a dog or a horse or something because that makes you a good guy. That makes you, you know, uh, it really softens your image. And so we put our, and, and what this is is your positives. So if you'll notice on a campaign, they start running the positive images about the campaign, about the person. One thing that does, that solidifies your base and it starts whittling away against your opponent's votes. After you run a series of these camps, whatever you can afford to do, then you have to run a tracking poll. And these are about $4,000. They target a lesser group of people, but also they'll be all in these age groups. And let's say you run that tracking poll, all right? Instead of 60, 40, now it's 45, 55. I have moved 5% of the voters with my positive campaign. They're working. So I continue to run these. Have you ever seen commercials that you literally get sick of seeing? You know why they're running them? They're still working. All right. When I did a tracking poll and these numbers stopped, you don't keep running those same ads. They're costing you time. You do different commercials. You do different ads. And you keep running these as long as you can, as long as you can financially afford them. All right, then it got down to where we were 52-48. And them numbers stuck there. This is why you start your negative campaigning. That's why they run negatives. Because you have got to take some of his core supporters and you've got to make them think he is the sorriest person in the world. Because you're trying to get his votes over to your column. And that's why you run positive, folks. There's an old saying in Washington, D.C., on an incumbent. They will never hire a new congressman, but occasionally they will fire an old one. So to beat him, you've got to get the voters convinced that that rascal doesn't deserve to be elected. You've got to fire him. And that's the only way a challenger can win.